He who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten maidens. Welcome to Spiritual Minefield. Today we're going to look at the ten virgins. Five get raptured and five stay behind. Stay tuned. Okay, so we're going to go to Matthew chapter 25. And we're going to look that the ten virgin is a picture. is a picture of five wise virgins and five foolish. And we're going to look at what the word foolish means for those five virgins. So then this is a picture that the five, when Jesus comes, only the five get raptured. They go with Christ, but the other five stay behind because they thought they were believers, but they weren't. And then when the rapture occur, they're going to find out that they never had a relationship with Jesus Christ because of what Jesus said to them. Okay, so let's read the story really quickly, and then we're going to go and we're going to compare other scriptures to see exactly what it means and the significance of it. Okay, so let's start in verse 1. It says, At that time the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps, but did not take along any extra oil. But the wise ones took oil in flasks, along with their lamps. When the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, Here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, our lamps are going out. No, said the wise ones, or there might not be enough for both of us, in you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy it, the bridegroom arrived. Those who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other virgins arrived and said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. Now, this is interesting here. We're going to look at this phrase here, Lord, Lord, in another passage. But he replied, truly, I tell you, I do not know you. And this right here, this phrase here, Truly, I tell you, I do not know you. We're going to look at and another passage in Matthew 7, the significance of that phrase also. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know the day or the hour. This is a picture, that phrase, you do not know the day or the hour, is in reference to the rapture. No one knows the rapture. It's going to come at a time no one expects it. We do not know the season, the time, the date. We don't know anything. It's going to come and it's going to take all the believers you know, the Lord's going to take them all with him. Now, let's go to Matthew 24. In Matthew 24, it has a phrase to keep watch because you don't know the day the Lord will come, the day or the hour. And just to let you know here in context, if we go to verse 36 of Matthew 24, it says, no one knows about that day or hour, not even the angels in heaven. So we see here uh, in reference to the rapture. So now we're going to go down to verse 42 and it says, therefore, keep watch. Because you do not know the day on which your Lord will come. But understand this, if the homeowner had known in which watch of the night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have let his house be broken into. For this reason, you also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour you do not expect. Who then is the faithful and wise servant? Here it is against with the wise. Remember, you have five wise virgins and five foolish now, here's a picture of Jesus trying to address who is ready, okay? So, it says, be ready because you do not know when he's coming. So, then he's going to give you two examples of a person who is ready and a person who's not ready. So, verse 45, who then is a faithful and wise servant whom the master has put in charge of his household to give the others their food at the proper time? Blessed is that servant whose master finds him doing so when he returns. Truly, I tell you, he will put him in charge of all his possession. So here the, the wise servant is actually busy doing God's will. So when Jesus comes, he's going to catch him doing his will. It doesn't mean that you're going to be raptured because you're doing works. Works is a sign that you truly have faith. Because if a person has the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is going to prompt you to do God's will. So when Jesus comes, you're going to be busy doing God's will. A fake Christian, someone who thinks that they have the Holy Spirit, will not be busy doing God's work. So when Jesus comes... They're going to be cut off guard, and they will not go. And I'm going to show you this. Okay, verse 48. But suppose that servant is wicked and says in his heart, My master will be away a long time. Here this servant believes that his master is going to take a long time to come back. So what does he do? 
says he's not says he believes that his master is going to take a long time to come back he's going to get lazy and he's going to show his true colors verse 49 and he begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with drunkards the master of that servant will come on a day he does not expect and at an hour he does not anticipate then he will cut him to pieces and assign him a place where with the hypocrites where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth so here's a picture that when the lord comes and catches you off guard not living for him is because there's something wrong with you spiritually that means you are devoid of the holy spirit because you're not walking as christ walked and you're living in sin that is a picture of the five foolish virgins which i'm going to show you what the word foolish means so for that we're going to go to strong's number 3474 so this is a strong's number for the word foolish the five foolish virgins okay so the greek word here is mortals it's where we get the english word for moron or moronic okay and it also means dull stupid and foolish so then let's go down here so it says mortals okay and it says moronic this is where we get the english terms moron moronic like i said earlier properly dull insipid and i'm going to show you what insipid means flat without an edge figuratively mentally in inert dull in understanding and nonsensical moronic lacking a grip on reality acting as though brainless okay now look at the word here really quickly insipid okay so remember foolish is attributed to five of the virgins so what is insipid so let's go here to miriam webster and this is the word here insipid and look what it says it says lacking taste or savor tasteless insipid food meaning food that has no salt does that ring a bell well let's go to matthew chapter 5 and then look what it says in matthew chapter 5 here the lord says that we have to be a certain way okay and then look what it says in verse 13 it says you are the salt of the earth but if the salt loses its savor how can it be made salty again it is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men if a person claims to be a christian and his saltiness is gone how can he get that saltiness again if a person abandons jesus christ and wants nothing to do with him how is he going to get christ again when he already rejected him but i'm going to show you here in context what saltiness or salt here means but we're going to keep reading in verse 14 and here the word light is also in reference to salt because jesus is using the word salt and light to mean the same thing so he's using two different aspects to mean you know to show you something of the same so then look at verse 14 you are the light of the world a city on a hill cannot be hidden neither do people light a lamp and put it under a basket instead they set it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house in the same way let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and glorify your father in heaven so here the word salt and light is a reference to good works basically when a person is salty it's because it's showing that you have the Holy Spirit inside of you. When you taste something, is is very, you know, it tastes very good. Why? Because when you give the gospel to a person, it really touches their heart. It touches their lives. Why? Because the word of God is alive. So that's what here uh, the Lord is trying to say with the word salt and light. So light is in reference that the Holy Spirit is working in you to do good deeds, to accomplish God's will. The same thing with salt. You are salty. Basically, you are flavorful. You are doing God's word and you're pleasing to the Lord. That's what the salt and the light is in reference to. It's in reference to doing good deeds. Deeds that glorifies Christ. Not just regular good deeds, but it is to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, let's go back here to the five foolish virgins. So if we look at here, it says, it says five of them were foolish. So here the word foolish means... It means here, sip it, meaning it has no saltiness. It is flat. The food is flat. And we looked at the definition of sip it. So basically, the foolish one did not have the Holy Spirit. They, they did not have God inside. They thought they did. So then their oil was running out. Why? Because it wasn't genuine. They didn't really have the Lord. And they were not living right. They were living in sin. So we're going to go now to Matthew chapter 7. And then remember what I told you in matthew 25 where it says lord lord and then underneath it said truly i tell you i do not know you that means that the the foolish 
virgins did not have salt, meaning they were living a life in sin. They were not converted yet. They never were converted. They never had the Holy Spirit because they were saltless. And not only that, Jesus tells him, I do not know you. Now, I'm going to show you the same phrase, Lord, Lord, and then I do not know you. So let's go to Matthew 7, and we're going to start in verse 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, you see that phrase there? It's, it's again, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name drive out demons and perform many miracles? This is a picture of the five foolish virgins who, who thought they had the Holy Spirit because they had some type of oil. Basically, they were probably doing things for the Lord. They were seeking the Lord in, in the sense of in their own imagination, but they were still living in sin. They, were, they did not have a transformed life. Their life did not show that they were literally transformed by the Holy Spirit. So there was no evidence of the Holy Spirit living inside of them. That's why the oil ran out and the fire they had died off because they really didn't have the Holy Spirit. Now look at this. Now look what Jesus tells this person here who, who claims to have a ministry and who claimed to prophesy, to uh, drive out demons, and to perform many miracles. Look what Jesus tells them. Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. That's the same phrase that the Lord tells the five foolish virgins. Look what he says here. It says, truly I tell you, I do not know you. The same thing. Now, it says, and then this is why the Lord says, I never knew you, or I do not know you. Look at this. It says, depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. So basically, here the five foolish virgins to be saltless. The reason why the word in Greek is moros, where we get the word moron, moronic, foolishness, and things like that, is because if you know better, and you're not giving your life to Christ to accomplish His will in your life, and then what does that, that's being stupid, that's being dumb, why? Because you know the consequences, and if you completely live for this world, then what you're going to reap? You're going to reap death, you're not going to reap life. So then many Christians who think they're Christians are still living in the world, are still living in sin. When Jesus comes in the rapture, they're going to, be, they're going to stay behind. They're going to say, Lord, Lord, don't leave us. The Lord is going to say, I never knew you. Depart from me, workers of lawlessness. Why? Because their life did not show a transformation. They do not show that they have the Holy Spirit working inside of them. So here are the virgins, okay? The five foolish virgins here literally means to have no taste and jesus in matthew 5 says you are the salt of the earth but if the salt loses its savor how can it be made salty again it is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men so the five foolish virgin the word foolish there it just means that they were not saved it means that they were still living in sin that's why they didn't have oil it ran out because their life wasn't right with the lord so when Jesus came, they were left behind, and when they knocked on the door so that the Lord could open, Jesus said, I do not know you. That means they were never saved. So now you have it. If you're still living in sin, if your life is not reflecting a life of holiness, if your life does not reflect the life of Jesus Christ, then that means that you don't have the Holy Spirit. Now is the time to get right before Jesus comes. The last thing you want is to stay behind. Thank you for listening.